This is Searching the Scriptures devotional number 18. And we've been looking at Isaiah 9, 6 for the past few days. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Today we want to take a look at the Hebrew word that is rendered mighty, the mighty God. And this is Strong's number 1368, and it's found over 150 times in the Old Testament and exemplifies God's limitless and incomparable power. It is used frequently in the context of a great warrior. For example, in Deuteronomy 10:17 we read, "For Jehovah, your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward." Similarly, Psalm 24:8 states, "Who is this king of glory? Jehovah, strong and mighty." Jehovah mighty in battle. We also read in Jeremiah 32:18 uh, this passage which really illustrates both God's mercy and justice. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great the mighty God Jehovah of hosts is his name. In Psalm 89, 19, uh, it speaks prophetically of the Messiah. Then thou speakest in vision to the Holy One, and saidst, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. And in the New Testament, we also find several parallel passages. One of them is in Revelation 7.12, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might, which is uh, Strong's number 2479, be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Also in Revelation 11:17, we find this uh, beautiful verse saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great, which is the, the word megas, uh, Strong's number 3173, power or dunamis, Strong's number 1411, and hast reigned. Isaiah 42, 13 uh, is a passage that uh, speaks about God's determination to punish his enemies. And here we see this word uh, translated as mighty man. It's again Strong's number 1368. Jehovah shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So we see that these passages are speaking about the very day that we're living in, the day of judgment. Uh, Psalm 45.3 also emphasizes the fact that God will punish his enemies with his sword. And we know that the sword it typifies uh, the word of God. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. The sword symbolizes the power of the word of God to inflict punishment, as we read in Revelation 19.15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness 
and wrath of Almighty God. These verses have everything to do with our current day that we're living in right now. Uh, we also read in Zephaniah 1.14, The great day of Jehovah is near. It is near and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of Jehovah. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Also in the New Testament, uh, speaking of our day, we read in uh, Matthew 24, 29, 30, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And all, and then all shall, and excuse me, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this verse uh, is speaking spiritually that the sun, which represents Christ, and the moon, which represents the law of God, and the stars, which represent believers. Uh, all of these are <clears throat> darkened. Uh, they are not giving their light. They are no longer uh, witnessing during the day of salvation because nighttime has come, spiritual nighttime, in which there is no more salvation. And, and God's wrath, which started out initially on the churches and denominations on May 21, 1988, transition to the world on May 21, 2011, and God shut the door to salvation. And this is why Revelation 6.17 6, is, is such a pertinent passage to the human race. For all, for, uh, excuse me, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? 